Hi everyone and welcome to our second ICA New Professionals webinar for 2020, which is also sadly our last. Uh, my name is Angela and I am one sixth of the Adelaide 2019-2020 cohort. So before we get started, I would just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that I live and work on, which is beautiful Ngunnawal and Ngambri country, also known as present day Canberra in Australia. I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and future and to any and all Indigenous people here with us tonight or today or this morning. I want to also acknowledge the ongoing care and connection to the country that our Indigenous communities have all over the world. It's this care and respect that make it possible for us to work and thrive in what we do in the archival community. So first up, I'm sure most people here will know us by now, but um, just in case, I'll go around and introduce everyone in our 2019-20 um, cohort and they can give us a wave so you can put a face to a name. As I mentioned a, a second ago, my name is Angela and I work and live in Canberra in Australia. Um, Anne Floor lives and works in Heidelberg, Germany. Hi Anne Floor. Um, while Maria is coming to us from Cairo in Egypt. <laughs> there she is. Laura lives and works in Reading in England. Hello. And Forget has just moved from Zimbabwe to Abu Dhabi for a new job. I forget. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Priyanka is coming to us from New Delhi in India. Oh. <laughs> there she is. Um, so the first job in today's virtual event will be to introduce everyone to our leaflet titled Running a Workshop at a Conference for First Time Facilitators. Once we have done this, uh, we're going to introduce the six new ICA new professionals for 2020 and to 21. Some of them are here with us today and they'll give a little spiel about themselves so we can get to know them um, and we, will, we can welcome them all into the community. Finally, we'll be signing off as the ICA new professionals for 2019-20, but let's not talk about that until we have to. It's very sad. So there will be no Slido or other app interactions during this webinar, and we don't have a formal Q&A, but please feel free to interact with us on the Facebook chat function or on Twitter. Uh, we'll either get to them at the end if we have time, or we'll, uh, we'll get back to you if you leave your social media handle or email address. Um, or you can just sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Uh, over to you, Anne Floor, to talk about the leaflet. Oh, hi. Um, so, sorry, I, I just realized I've got too many screens to look at here. <laughs> um, so, the as many of you know, uh, one of the outcomes of the program um, of the New Professionals program is to create a, is a group project, and we've had many ideas uh, throughout the year. Um, we worked together on things such as uh, reviving the New Professionals newsletter, um, which you can sign up to if you go to the New Professionals website. <laughs> um, we've, of course, managed social media, did different uh, things um, online, uh, both Twitter and uh, Facebook. We started uh, working on an open uh, bibliography. Uh, we, back in June, we published a statement on the Black Lives Matters movement. But the project per se that we eventually uh, settled on was uh, creating a, uh, a leaflet. Um, one of the things about the leaflet actually is that it really allowed us to work as a, as a group and each of us bringing some of the interest and skills um, that, uh, that we had. So I think it was a, a nice one uh, to, to, de to deliver. And, and, and I think we also felt that it, that it addresses a problem um, that was that's quite relevant to new professionals and to conference uh, newbies. So by putting workshops uh, front and center and supporting new professionals in uh, in running one, because we really believe that new and varied voices uh, should be should be heard at, at conferences and wanted to facilitate it and empower um, pe uh, new professionals and uh, people new at conferences. Uh, another aspect to it is <laughs> just giving information that. I think, I think where we think is often assumed, but never actually shared um, how, to, how to run workshops. Um, and so we really hope that this document, so that you can see uh, on screen now, so print, prints out nicely, um, that can be built on, used, adapted for your needs, uh, for new archives and records management professionals or, or even beyond. Um, and 
and yeah, so we really hope that it's uh, it's useful. So this is what it looks like in general. Like I said, you can print it out as a nice um, as a nice A4. Um, and Nicola will be putting the link to the leaflet that's now online in the chat, um, so you can have a look at it there. So I'll now uh, work, talk you through some of the more uh, specifics of what's on it. Um, so in general, um, it's in four parts. So we've got the basics. <laughs> we have what it might look like. We have a checklist of practical things. Um, and then we have go run your workshop. Um, we wanted a real mixture of, uh, of both theoretical and practical uh, things. Um, so here are some of the things that we've highlighted. So on the next slide. Um, thank you. The the question of actually how to select a topic for your workshop, I think, is is one that we spent a a, a bit of time on because, you know, the the we all have interests. We all have, all have things that we want to say. Conferences often have themes, um, but one thing that that is important is you know you're 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 running a workshop, whether it's you or with others. Um, make sure pick a topic that you're interested in. <laughs> pick a topic that you're happy to talk about for for two, three um, three hours because you're going to need to do quite a lot of preparation. Uh, on it, you're going to need to to come across uh, to be knowledgeable about it. Um, so don't don't pick don't pick something that really really bores you. <laughs> um, otherwise, your enthusiasm will will really be sapped um, uh, at the uh, uh, at, at the get go. Um, and here, I want to give a shout out to uh, Margaret Crockett, who really helped us think about learning outcomes. Um, whether because the the people who who are interested in the theme that you're advertising um, will come to the workshop to find something out, whether whether it's new knowledge, whether it's new connections, whether it's um, new, uh, a specific new skill on how to do something. Um, your a workshop isn't isn't like isn't like a le uh, just a lecture. It's you you need to think of what your participants are going to uh, to get out of it. Um, then what uh, what sort of activities um, you might do? So we tried to give you a few um, a few suggestions, whether it's for the introductions part, um, for the presentations, or for group work, or for how to how to feedback. There are many different ways ways to do this, um, and we've listed uh, some. Of course, you can build on them, adapt. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list, um, but we tried to to give you a a start. Um, so back when we started talking about this uh, workshop, so the way I remember it was at, at breakfast one morning in Adelaide about this time uh, last year when we were at the ICA conference. Um, and of course, back then we were all meeting in person. <laughs> um, now the world is meeting online, um, but obviously workshops can still happen, but you'll just need to think about it slightly differently um, on how you're running, um, on how you're, you're running the event. Um, and finally, there's a section on uh, worst case scenarios and best case solutions. Uh, if you're anything like me, when you uh, when you you have something planned, you'll you, my brain immediately goes to thinking about I'm going to forget to wear a watch. I'm going to forget my notes. My memory stick isn't going to adapt. So we've tried to anticipate some of these scenarios and give you solutions that can help you. Uh, help you overcome them so that you're not um, not too worried uh, walking into in, in, into the workshop. Um, there there are other uh, other sections we've linked to a few resources, thinking of handout and and materials, um, and we've we've also given a um, uh, an, an an outline um, an outline of, of what something can look like. So so remember to count and to account for breaks. Um, before feedback time and a bit of buffer zone. So, um, so that's that's leaflet. Uh, go to it, link to it, um, and uh, hopefully, and build on it. Hopefully, that'll uh, uh, it'll be a useful resource for you. So, enjoy. Thank you, and Flo, for taking us through that. Um, I'm just here to give you some key takeaways that we hope you you'll take away from the leaflet, and. Um, Okay, so firstly, we want to say plan, plan, plan. We think this is one of the most important things you can do before um, a, a workshop. Um, you need enough time to think your ideas through. You need enough time to get your application in, your props sorted, testing your kit on the day, and all this stuff requires planning. So um, we just think that it would just be so much easier if you take the time to plan things out. It will allow you on the day to sort of um, focus on presenting and if anything goes wrong then you'll just be able to focus on that a lot a lot easier. 
Um, and also on the day, it will just allow you to be a lot more uh, responsive to your audience, um, which brings me to my next point, which is think about your audience. Um, Anne Floor has already touched on this a little bit, but we can't stress enough how important this is. Uh, workshops should be interactive, and this obviously means giving careful consideration to what your participants need and what they want. Um, and to be honest, this is useful for any presentation that you're going to do. Um, thinking about your audience is great. Um, Nowadays, we don't sort of have that physical wrap up and goodbye. So it's probably just quite good to have um, a follow up email or anything like that. And that again comes under thinking about your audience. Okay. And finally, we want you to remember that you are great. So um, you'll be amazed at how much confidence can do for you during an event. And so we just want you to remember to trust yourself and your topic. Uh, you know what you're doing, you're awesome, and everything's going to be fine. And to borrow a line from the leaflet, Go out there and shine. Okay, so I'm just going to pass you over to Maria, who's going to introduce you to the new cohort. Thank you, Laura. Uh, hi to everybody, and hope to enjoy the last but not least webinar of the ICA New Professionals Cohort 2019-2020. And now it's time, the time for the new cohort of 2020-21 to introduce themselves to the ICA community and for others. Six new professionals from all around the world uh, are going to attend and meet the challenges of the ICA Abu Dhabi Congress next, next year and experience uh, an exciting year as ICA active new professionals. Elizabeth, Zoe, Makutla, and Razan are living, lively joining us today, and Francesca and Maria Lu, Luz Maria have sent a video recording. So let's meet them and wish them uh, good luck, lots of new opportunities and fun on their first in the National Archival Community journey. So let's start with uh, Francesca video, video recording. Hello, my name is Francesca. I'm from London and I work at the National Archives in the UK as a digital archivist. Uh, my job mostly involves working with large digital collections and also conducting file format research. I'd say aside from this, my main interests are probably around user experience and also um, archives and accessibility and reaching out to new audiences and how we manage that. I think the main thing I'm looking forward to as part of the new professionals program is connecting with other professionals around the world learning from them, sharing experiences and ideas. And I'm just very excited for all of that. OK, so if we go to Elizabeth next. OK, I hope you can hear me now. Hello everyone, my name is Elisabeth. Um, I'm very happy to meet you today. I come from Germany and I have studied archival science and information science at the University of Applied Sciences Potsdam. Um, presently I work for the State Archives of Baden-Württemberg. Uh, I work on a project for the improvement of the accessibility of archival records. Um, I'm very much looking forward to working in a group with uh, the other NPs um, and my colleagues. And of course, I'm looking forward to the Congress in Abu Dhabi next year. And apart from that, I would like to get in touch with colleagues and other new professionals outside of the new professionals program too, um, via social media or our newsletter. And yeah, I'm happy to hear from you. Perfect, thank you. And um, next, can we have Raza? Um, hello, everyone. Um, to be honest, I have an exam after 10 minutes, so I will do it quickly. <laughs> uh, I'm from Jordan. I studied uh, conservation restoration management, and I'm completing my completing my master's degree in the master, oh, sorry, in library science. I'm working with American Center of Oriental Research. Now I am the archival technician. Uh, we have to um, 
scan 30,000 image for Jordan. And we have next year another places such as Syria, uh, Turkey, uh, Iraq, um, Palestine. Where is? <laughs> I'm very happy to be with uh, the new professional program this year. Um, I'm so excited. Um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, can we get Makutna next? Good day, good day, everyone. My name is Makutla Mujapelo, as they've already indicated, and I'm based in the capital city of South Africa, which is Pretoria. I'm currently uh, working at the University of South Africa, and I'm working as a lecturer in the Department of Information Science. So part of my work includes um, teaching, and I also develop um, the, the modules and I'm also responsible for research. So in terms of the qualifications, I'm currently holding master's degree in information science obtained from the same university, UNISA, and I'm currently busy with my PhD studies. So uh, the area of my interest is the promotion of access to information and I just want to take this opportunity once again to thank uh, International Council on Archives, especially the task team uh, that have you know, put uh, more effort uh, in terms of the selection uh, for the 2020 cohort. And I want to assure you that you've not uh, made a bad decision. I'm looking forward to make contribution to the archival community at large. And I'm also looking forward to engage with my uh, team members. And let's learn, let's share from one another. And thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. Um, and we're just gonna play you a video from Liz Maria who couldn't be here. There we go. Hi, my name is Luz Maria Narbona. I am from Chile. I am archivist and master in history of science. Since 2017, I have worked in several archive projects related to the modernization and science and socio environmental history in my country. Uh, there before, I am part of Archivera Sin Frontera Chile, archivist Without Borders and Asamblea de Archiveros y Archiveras de Chile, Chilean Archives uh, Assembly, uh, and Associated uh, created after the social revolt in my country. Bye. Okay. Um, I'll just do a quick uh, um, intro of Zoe Dickinson, who has issued a last minute apology that she couldn't be here, but um, Zoe is currently working as an archives records officer for an international organization in Washington, DC. Prior to this, she worked at the European Central Bank in Frankfurt in Germany, the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna, Austria, and volunteered at a number of organizations in Scotland in the UK. Zoe graduated from the Information Management and Preservation Postgraduate de Degree Program in 2016 in Archives and Records Management, and as part of her studies undertook a placement at the National Archives of Malta. She hopes that as a member of the new professionals program, she can help work to create a more diverse and accessible profession for not only those who work within it, but also, those, also for those who use it. Um, Zoe is honoured to have been selected for this year's programme and cannot wait to get started. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. And good luck with your exam, Razan. Well, so here it is. Time to say goodbye to this wonderful programme. Thanks to the ICA. Thanks to the ICA and our mentors and everyone who made this an enriching year. Thanks so much for having us. It has been an absolute pleasure being part of this group, meeting everyone at the conference. We wish the new group all the luck. We know it's going to be an amazing experience. Now, we each want to say something, 
uh, which, which might be a nice one, nice way to uh, lead a baton to the new cohort. Maybe a key thing that we have taken away or a favorite moment or a hope for the new cohort, etc. So, Anne Floor, would you like to say something? Yes, and it'll been, you'll hear me if I unmute myself. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm just really grateful for the opportunity that I've had to meet and engage with so many awesome new professionals, not only within the cohort, um, but also just from around the world, people who've engaged with us um, in, different, in different ways. I've learned so much um, uh, just personally and as well as uh, professionally, and that was really, really uh, truly priceless. So thanks to everyone um, at the ICA, to my mentor, uh, uh, Jonas Billy, just to everyone that we've had a chance to engage with. So um, thank you and uh, new cohort, go have a blast. Hello everyone. Yeah, um, yeah I'll, I'll go next. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not, it's really hard to put into words uh, a goodbye, I guess, but I just, I think I want to say thank you to everyone that was involved in this. Um, thank you for all the support and the encouragement and the big confidence boost. Um, thank you to the group and to the mentors and everyone. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I feel really, really good knowing that this program is going to continue and each year a new group of new baby archivists, as Angela calls us, a new group of baby archivists are gonna get the opportunity to, to make this program their own. So yeah, good luck to everybody. Yeah, and for me, you know, I have so much to say, it's all written in my heart and I don't even know which statements to bring out first. So I'm just gonna pour my thank yous if they come in, it's never going to be enough. Uh, for me, it's not a goodbye because uh, we'll forever remain the 2019 to 2020 cohort. And we're going to continue to work together even outside of um, the new professionals program because ICA brought us together and we've built such a powerful working team. And thank you so much once again to ICA. You are the glue that binds the profession together globally and Without you, I can't imagine what the records management professionals and archival scientists the world would be like. I remember when I joined my first degree, beginning my undergraduate program, the only resources that I knew when it comes to trying to understand, you know, records management were resources coming from the International Council on Archives. So my words of goodbye and thank you would be to say, please, Continue the good work that you are doing. Um, it's, we really appreciate it. And to all the mentors, the conference buddies, and uh, particularly the likes of Sharon, Nicola, Maria Paula, Anthea, and David, thank you so very much. You are appreciated more than you can imagine and know. That's all for me from now. And once again, thank you and welcome to the new cohorts. Um, I guess I'll go next. Uh, there's definitely a running theme of um, profound gratitude here, but um, I just, yeah, it's hard to, like Lara said, it's hard to put into words the, the amount of support um, and encouragement and um, help that we have got from the ICA. So thank you so much for bringing us here. Um, I found such challenges and such confidence um, through this program. And thank you to my mentor and all the mentors really just for being amazing. Um, thank you to M Nicola and Maria Paula for looking after us all the time and just being there whenever we need. It's just such a great um, and kind and thoughtful community. Um, thanks for opening the the community, the new professional, the broader new professionals and archivist community up to us. Um, and obviously thank you to the five other incredible women, young women that I have gotten to work with. I know that we're gonna be friends for a long time um, and colleagues. So uh, just, I only hope that the next 
cohort um, can have such a great time and I, I know they will. So good luck. Hello everyone. I'm Priyanka. Thank you ICA for giving me this opportunity to connect with the global archival community through this new professionals program. The best part of this program is that you're always welcome with your creative ideas. And one such example is our leaflet launch. I'll forever be grateful for the knowledge and the skills that I have gained working under this program with all the lovely ladies over here. So thank you ICA for this opportunity and I welcome the new cohort to take the baton and lead the, lead the path. Thank you. From my part, I would like first of all to say a big thank you to my beautiful uh, team members, uh, five uh, very powerful and very and great art, new professor, new archivists from all over the world. They uh, all together we did, I think, a very good job. Uh, I would like to thank Nicola, Maria Bola, my mentor James Mortlock, uh, Laura Millar, and all all the others that they um, created a very uh, powerful and encouraging environment for us for having a very wonderful and exciting uh, year in the ICA new professional uh, uh, program. Um, I think that this is not the end for us. It was our first uh, journey in the uh, international archival community, but I think that this is not the end. It's just the beginning for more uh, nice things for uh, other uh, collaborations for uh, uh things that we are not expecting now but probably they will surprisingly uh uh having in the future uh i would like to say uh also to the new cohort good luck it would be really uh, an unprecedented opportunity for them uh for cultivating new skills new knowledge and learning how to uh, work internationally and in a team this is really a wonderful experience uh, and good luck. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, for everything. Thank you to the ICA and keep in touch. Yeah, thank you. So, thank you, thank you, thank you so everyone. Thank you, thanks, ICA. everybody. Thanks. Bye, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>